Good morning. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous day today. about to burst. Spring is here and as you know it symbolizes new beginnings which we love because starting anything new is always exciting. What new beginning though? Where do I even start? If you ask me these questions then I will answer start with you, reinvent yourself. This is absolutely one of my favorite cafes. <sighs> the weather is just perfect perfect yeah well, like i remember here like because there is a lake near this cafe right in front of it actually and a few months ago we encountered the stray dog and the dog followed us along the way you know what i'm gonna share it with you now i'm gonna share the our walk with the stray dog i think it's, it's so cute reinventing yourself think of it as whispering to your soul asking, hey, what truly makes us happy? The answer should not come from your mind, but more like a quiet voice inside telling you the true answer that will give you a happy feeling just thinking about it. It's like rediscovering your favorite song, book or movie after years and it still gives you excitement. This journey is deeply personal like turning the pages of an old diary and deciding to start a new chapter, right here, right now. Only you can do it. Imagine every morning you wake up with a blank page. What do you want to write on it? Joyful words, thoughtful notes, dreams, scary things, negative things. It's really up to you. And you do not have to write what you wrote yesterday or the day before that. You can change what you write every day. It's okay to change your mind over and over again because once you align with your true self, there is no changing. When you know, you know. Letting go of the old is a must to reinvent yourself. It doesn't need to be hard. In fact, you should not force it. When you force something, you do not allow it to come ironically. Like walking with this dog, we didn't force him to follow us. He came on his own and created the most magical experience, unexpectedly. You should allow who you are to come to you naturally, softly. But how? How do you do it? Well, start by sitting with yourself and observing your inner world. It's, you know... The majority would call it meditation. It's in the quiet moments that you realize you need to gently accept that some parts of you have done their time, that they no longer serve you. Thank them and softly let them fly away. Crafting a new you isn't about a drastic change. It's in the tiny details, the subtle shifts in your thoughts that suddenly make your whole life feel different. It's in choosing to laugh louder, to pause and look at the sky, to feel the wind, to find magic in everyday life. Uh, it's a beautiful spring day and actually we're gonna spend some of it inside ironically because we're going to the movies to watch Dune 2. Um, we recently watched the first installation of Dune that was out in 2021 and yeah I'm, I, our expectations were very high because they said many masterpieces were inspired by Dune like Game of Thrones and stuff so I was like expecting better than this was I don't know I'm, I'm still was good still was good so now we're gonna see the second part oh my gosh I would buy this for my house. I mean, the colors. This is so pretty.
Well, apparently we rented the cinema for ourselves. Nobody! No one is here! <laughs> Oh, the movie was really good like the cinematics were amazing and I prefer this part two compared to the first one I don't know like the story is more interesting it's more catching I feel like the first one was more like uh, context like presenting the context and getting to know the characters and stuff but now yeah. it's like the real action began began mm. So, yeah, it was really fun. It's very long. <laughs> oh my gosh, the acting is great. Oh, yes. The scenes, like the, the filming, the sound, everything was so perfect. But I like the color combination, it's so nice. Actually, I wouldn't know which one to pick. <laughs> I wouldn't know whether to pick the pink one or the purple one. Hmm. It's gonna depend on the room, I guess. If it's an office, I'll pick this. If it's a bedroom, I'll pick this. <laughs> After touring this first floor, he asked me what's my favorite painting. So I said this one, you know, these two. And his favorite painting is this one. And I was like, that is so us. Because that's his mind. That's how your mind is, right? It's very logical. One plus one equals two. Very clear, very like sharp lines, like very like, like this, right? <laughs> I lost words. Meanwhile, this is my mind. <laughs> Full of shapes and things. Chaos in this mind. So I thought it was very good analogy. <laughs> How funny that this is your favorite. It re literally represents how our minds work. <laughs> But the gallery was really good, especially that painting. <clears throat> you really, really enjoyed that painting. Mm. Yeah. There are some abstract feelings I can't really describe what they are. But that described it quite well visually. <laughs> it, it was amazing. Like, I was like, how did you do that? How did you know I had this feeling? Actually, it's amazing because... Like, I never associated feeling to image or two colors or to anything. You know how they say people, like the anger is red and um, jealousy is green, etc. I never associated an emotion to a color. So it's very interesting that that painting triggered uh, an emotion and like described your emotion and you knew it described your emotion because that's fantastic. I wish I could, I was able to describe my emotion like visually.
At 30, I took a leap that felt like jumping into a vast, uncharted territory. Backing up my life wasn't just about filling suitcases. It was about having the courage to step into the unknown. Moving to a new country, I stepped over an invisible line, leaving behind everything familiar and known, embarking on a journey that was as scary as it was exciting. Yes, moving to Korea was scary. The streets were new, the language, a sound I hadn't learned the words to yet, and the solitude? It was an unexpected companion, forcing me to sit with myself, really sit and listen to my own thoughts, dreams and fears. Although I have my husband, I went from having a very busy social life, full of gatherings with friends, events with family, fun time with colleagues, to having one person, although caring and loving, but a person that also has a life and cannot dedicate all their time to you. How cute is that bus stop? Like, this is the cutest bus stop I've seen in my life. So, I faced solitude, but in that solitude, in the process of adjusting to a new life, something beautiful happened. I began to discover pieces of myself I never knew existed, like finding a hidden path in a familiar forest. I uncovered strengths, passions, and desires that had been waiting quietly for their moment to shine. At first, it was horrible. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Once I observed my inside world, it was a hectic, chaotic place, full of self-criticism, anxiety, anger, self-doubt, you name it. I realized I was living on survival mode all the time, and I was not even aware of it. That's how I learned to let go. The relief I felt once I realized that I was not being myself, that I was on a program that was running by itself for years, even decades at this point. Oh my god, the relief. That amazing sensation when you start to let go is incomparable. At first that relief lasted for a fraction of a second, and I did not know how to get it back. But the more I practiced, the more I listened to my inner world, the more I was able to let go, gently, again, thanking every negative feeling and let them go. My life changed since then. I learned to cherish the small victories. The first time I went to the local market successfully, the initial awkward conversation in a new language that led to a smile of understanding, the warm, comforting aroma of a home-cooked meal that reminded me of my roots. This journey of reinvention at 30 wasn't just about changing my address, it was about reshaping my identity. It was about learning that home is not just a place, but a feeling you carry inside you. I know it's a cliché, but it is one for a reason. There is a sense of peace and belonging that blooms from self-discovery and acceptance. And now, as I continue to navigate this path, I realize that the process of finding myself is ongoing, a never-ending process that's both challenging and deeply rewarding. The fear and doubt haven't completely disappeared, but they've become familiar and less scary. They are just here to remind me of how far I've come and how much more there is to explore. In the quiet moments of solitude, in the laughter shared with new people who've become close friends, in the quiet confidence that grows with each small step forward, I find the warmth and joy of being truly alive. This journey has taught me that it's never too late to start over to dream new dreams, and to discover the endless possibilities that lie within me. It's okay to still be discovering who you are. So, go for it. Sit quietly, 
romanticize your life. Choose to feel the warmth of the sun on your face during a chilly morning walk. Choose the serenity of sipping tea. Choose the courage to dance as if nobody's watching. Find joy in the journey, in the simple act of being beautifully, wonderfully, authentically you. I hope my words inspired you to start this journey of self-discovery, a wild, wonderful journey of becoming the truest version of yourself, the best one. I will see you on my next one, love. Have a beautiful, beautiful day.